Hello everybody, this is Chris with CNM Aquatics. Today we're going to go over the test kit I use on my aquariums and, and how to do it. But first here I'm checking the specific gravity, or I'm checking how much salt is in the water. So the hydrometer here, I try to keep my salt between 1.025 and 1.026. As long as it stays in that range and it's stable, I'm pretty happy with that. So next we're going to go on to magnesium here. I'm using the Red Sea Magnesium Pro Test Kit. I've been pretty happy with this kit. It's pretty straightforward on how to use it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your syringe. And you're going to get two milliliters of water from your aquarium. So you're going to fill that syringe to the two milliliter mark and then put it in your jar here. You want to try to be as accurate as possible. You don't want two and a half. You don't want three. You know, you want you want to have two milliliters. So after you get your aquarium water in the jar, you're going to add five drops from Regent Bottle A. You're going to add a drop. I'm going to give it a little shake. You're supposed to wait 15 seconds in between each drop and shake it, but I usually just do all five. Then you're gonna to go to Regent Bottle B and you're gonna add five drops and give it a little shake. Let it sit for about 60 seconds before you move on to the next step. So I got a one milliliter syringe here. So Regent C is what we're gonna actually do the titration, the drip test with. So you're gonna draw up one milliliter of Regent C into your syringe. This test kit comes with, with everything I'm using here. I didn't have to buy anything extra. So attach your, your little jar under your holder here. You're going to slide the one milliliter syringe into the top of the holder. And it's important what you're going to try to do here. And the one milliliter syringe is pretty sensitive. So you want to add one drop at a time. So you're going to add one drop. You're going to give it a little shake and add another drop. So you can see the liquid in the jar right now is a pink color. The test is over when that solution turns to a dark purple color. On the magnesium I try to keep my tanks between 1250 and 1350 parts per million. Um, in the wild, natural reef levels are around 1300 parts per million. If I can keep my tank stable 1250 to 1350, I'm pretty happy with that. And a lot of a lot of the salt mixes out there now. Like I'm using the Instant Ocean Reef Crystals. And it's got a higher level of magnesium in it for the corals. For your average hobbyist, most people are fine with just, they keep up on their water changes and that's enough to replenish the magnesium. But if you start keeping a lot of SPS or a lot of LPS, um, you may have to manually dose magnesium. So that's why I test for it, to make sure it stays within those ranges. Leave me a comment below. I'm, I'm just curious on who test for magnesium and I, who doesn't. I know a lot of people who don't test for it and they have really good looking healthy tanks. But I like to know what it is. I have noticed if I keep the magnesium stable and in those ranges, uh, the coral tend to look healthier and, and grow better. So you can see here the solution has turned to that purple color so the test is over. So you look at your syringe and you see how much C regent you've used. And you look at your chart here and I use 0.68 milliliters which comes to 1360 parts per million. So the magnesium in that tank was actually a little high. So I won't dose any magnesium this week and then next week I'll check it again and see if it comes down. 
Too much, it's not too high. It's on the high end there. So, next we're testing ammonia. And with this, I'm using the API test kit. So, you're going to add 5 milliliters of aquarium water to your test tube. All these are 5 milliliters. There's a little mark on the test tube. I found it easier to use a syringe to fill it instead of dipping them in and guessing. So for ammonia, you're going to add 8 drops from bottle number 1. You're going to put the cap on and give it a little shake. It is, it is important to put the cap back on, just don't put your finger over the test tube because it can skew the test results. So always put the cap back on to shake the vial. After you give it a shake, you're going to take bottle number 2 and do eight drops, put the cap back on, shake it vigorously, and then you're going to let it sit for five minutes. So it'll sit and gain color, and we can compare it to our color chart. Now the next test we're going to do is for nitrate. I spilled some water out of the test tube here. I had to go get some more from the aquarium. Once again, you're going to fill your tube up to the 5 milliliter mark. And after you do that, you're going to take nitrate bottle number 1. And this one, you're going to do 10 drops. And it's important, try not to let the tip of the bottle touch the side of the test tube. You want to make sure that the drops are as uniform as possible. Drop straight into the water. So if you're 10 drops, put the cap back on and give it a, a shake. And you're going to take nitrate bottle number 2. And that's 10 drops as well. So do 10 more drops of that. Put the cap back on. Shake it. And it's got a it for at least five minutes. Um, with these test kits, all the cards, and it comes with a little booklet on, on how to do all these tests. So the instructions do come with the test kit. Once you do it a few times, it's not too bad. You get the hang of it. Next is phosphate. I'm going to test for phosphate. So bottle number one. You do six drops, put the cap on, shake it. Now bottle number two, it's six drops as well. But bottle number two, the liquid is very, very viscous. It's almost like a gel. So you gotta be careful. You gotta squeeze pretty hard to get it out. But it's easy to over squeeze and shoot a whole bunch out. You don't want that. So six drops. You're gonna put your cap back on. You're gonna give it a shake. Then it's gotta sit for at least three minutes before you can read it. So we'll move on and we will test, we're going to test DKH next. Which is our, our alkalinity we're testing for. And you want your alkalinity, your DKH, be between 8 and 12. 8 and 12 is what I shoot for. So you're going to add one drop to your vial. And it should turn a light blue color. If it turns yellow, your DKH is less than one, which is not good. So as long as it turns blue with one drop, you're good. And after that, you're going to add one drop at a time. So you're going to add a drop, put the cap on, shake it. Add a drop, put the cap on, shake it. And you're going to keep track of how many drops it takes to turn from a blue color, as you can see here, to a pale yellow color. When the water turns to a pale yellow, the test is over. There is debate on coral keeping, keeping the alkalinity high. Uh, I've read things where keeping it higher, people have had good success rates, you know, with coral growth and whatnot higher. On this particular tank I'm testing, it's usually around 7, so it's on the lower end, but all my acropora and everything that they're growing just fine it's more important i think to keep it stable you don't want those wide ph swings 
So I'd rather have it a little low, and if it stays stable and the coral is healthy, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm fine with that. So moving on to calcium here. So calcium bottle number one, you're going to add 10 drops. Put the cap back on, shake it. There's a lot of redundancy here with this testing. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add one drop at a time from bottle number two. Put the cap back on, shake it, do it again, another drop, cap back on, shake it. And you're going to keep doing this until the liquid in the bottle turns from a pink color to a dark purple, just like the magnesium test. And once it turns to a dark purple color, and the test is over. So you, you keep track and count how many drops. And the test kit comes with a booklet with a, with a chart um, for however many drops. You look it up on the chart and it equals your calcium level. I shoot for a range 350 to 450 parts per million in the calcium. 420 being pretty optimal that's what most people shoot for and this tank came back it was a little high on the calcium it was around 480 so testing on this tank my alkalinity was a little low my magnesium was a little low my calcium's high um, and I'll do another video so those three magnesium alkalinity and calcium they're all connected that, that's that's subject matter for another video that's another entire video we'll go over that later but the main thing is consistency is key if you can keep your levels consistent and stable and your coral is growing and look healthy, I wouldn't change anything. Let it go if it's working for you. Don't shoot for, uh, I've heard a lot of people just trying to shoot for a number. You can see here the change to the purple color here. So I'm going to stop the test and count. Um, it's not as important to have a particular number as it is to have a stable system. That's that's key so after five minutes you just look you, you take your color card and you're going to match the color of the water and the vial to the card and all these were fine my ammonia and nitrate and phosphate were all zero parts per million or very very low that's pretty much it for this video if you have any questions give me an email let me know leave your comments below and i'll see you on the next one